all, this is Mike the Black Reformed Baptist trying a new shortened version of the podcast. I'm taking the cue from my brother Peter Berthelsen over at The Worm Chronicle. I'm recording this directly to my phone. So we're going to try this out and see how it goes. I'd just like to talk for a moment about the myth of the Christian celebrity. With all of the news that's been going around about Josh Duggar and his indiscretions, I'd like to put an end to this myth um, that there's somehow a need for Christian celebrities, a, um, a biblical mandate that Christians should try to spread the gospel through their celebrity, uh, and what the Bible says about those who are seeking the spotlight, uh, which is antithetical to biblical Christianity. Uh, let's first talk about Josh Duggar and his sexual indiscretions. We know that the same scriptures that apply to uh, any other type of sexual immorality apply to Josh Duggar. He has proven through his actions and through his consistent, uh, unrepentant attitude towards his uh, sexual indiscretions that he is most likely outside of the kingdom of God. He lacks repentance. Uh, he's hiding uh, sexual indiscretions. Uh, he's not forthcoming. When he gets caught, then he quote unquote repents. Um, these are not the marks of a, of a true Christian. Uh, someone who is actually repentant, who uh, owes everything to Christ. Josh Duggar is a, is a celebrity who grew up in, in the spotlight. Um, uh, the Duggar TV show. I've never watched an episode. Only reason, the only reason I know about him is through other means. Um, I didn't know a Josh Duggar existed until the rape allegations happened a few months ago. I could care less uh, because my, my focus is not on Josh Duggar. It's on Jesus Christ. I look to the scriptures. I allow the Holy Spirit to guide my footsteps. That being said, Josh Duggar, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, applies to him. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. Josh Duggar uh, does not fit this description. Uh, I don't know how more how more plain it could be. He could have gotten out in front of this and repented prior to the uh, remove the uh, releasing of the list of the Ashley Madison clientele. Um, did he do so? No. Only after the fact did he come out and apologize. It's like, oh, I apologize for all this sin that I was hiding. Okay, well, I mean, sir, you keep hiding sin after sin after sin, sexual immorality after sexual immorality. Um, your fruit, I mean, your tree is bearing bad fruit. And Jesus said, you'll know the tree by the fruit. And uh, Galatians chapter 5 gives us a clear indication of what the fruit of those who do not know Christ is. And I will read that to you now. Uh, let me pull it up. Galatians chapter 5, verses uh, 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you as I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So Josh Duggar is proving by his fruit. Jesus said you would know them by the fruit, that he does not operate under the, um, under the guide of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not live inside of Josh Duggar. I would venture to say that with certainty. Okay. Um, yes, there are Christians that struggle with sin. But Josh Duggar is showing a consistent pattern of not being led by the Spirit. His fruit is horrible. Okay. We've got to be able to call men to repentance. No need to call, uh, call men to repentance when their fruit looks good. This man's fruit looks bad. He needs to repent. All right. And then he has a uh, certain level of Christian celebrity, which I don't get. I don't understand the point of 
Christian celebrity. I don't understand the mean, the, the reasons behind it. Cause first Thessalonians chapter four, starting at verse nine. Now concerning brotherly, bro, sorry, brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write to you. For you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. For that indeed is what you are doing to all the brothers throughout Macedonia. But we urge you brothers to do this more and more and to aspire to live quietly and to mind your own affairs and to work with your hands as we instructed you so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent upon no one. The Christian is not seeking the spotlight. Yes, the spotlight may come. Jesus was quite popular in Jude uh, Jerusalem and Judea. Okay. I mean, his works were uh, making him known. But was he seeking the spotlight? What was he always telling those whom he had healed? Say nothing to anyone. All right. Say nothing to anyone. This is this is a common thing. He told he told the disciples, he said, tell no one of the things that you have just seen on the Mount of Transfiguration. Tell no one of this. OK, don't. He didn't want the spotlight. He wasn't trying to go around proclaiming that he was God or that he is God. All right. It was for those whom who it whom it was chosen that they would know. Uh, that's not the that's not the way Jesus went about things. And he had the most. I mean, uh, Satan tempted Jesus uh, with fame, with all of the things that seem to be tempting man today in Matthew chapter 4. Satan gives Jesus the opportunity to be well known, to be the most popular person around. Okay? He says, if you would just jump off this cliff, everybody would know you're the Son of God. Come on. Throw yourself down. Okay? It's like... Nobody, you know, look, look, everyone would know that you're God if you jumped off this cliff and then lived. <laughs> OK. All right. So we've got to, we've got to realize that Jesus, who could have seen, who could have sought the spotlight, who is the light. If he wasn't seeking spotlight, why are we? Why are we trying to seek spotlight? Yes, we preach the gospel message, but we're not looking for celebrity. That's antithetical to the gospel. Christ, who is God, humbled himself. Taking upon himself the form of a servant, a servant, a slave, and being uh, made in the likeness of men, humbled himself even unto death, even a death upon the cross. That's Philippians chapter 2. So if God in the flesh humbled himself and was not seeking spotlight, why are we as Christians trying to do that? Why do we need Christian celebrities? I don't care if a, Christ, if a, if a celebrity is a Christian, that's fine. But if you're a quote unquote Christian celebrity, someone who uh, is supposed to be spreading the name of Christ because of your fame uh, or you are a you're upholding fair like the Duggars, Duggar family values. Uh, absolutely not. The Bible. It's not about the Duggars family values because we see what their what their family values are about. Hiding rape, hiding all sorts of things while they're in the spotlight, seeking the spotlight out, knowing that they have these issues inside of their family. We have to be more discerning than this. And then we as Christians, quote unquote, the, the Christian population props them up and want, you know, look at look at this Duggar family. Look at that. No, look to Christ, because Christ never sinned. Preach Christ and him crucified. That's our job. That is our job as Christians. So when the Duggar family, you know, do, does what sinners do, so what? If they're repentant, they're, they're in the family of God. If they're not repentant, they're outside of it. We don't need them to be our righteousness because Christ is our righteousness. No one can impugn the name of the, of the God who created. Jesus Christ is perfect was perfect, walked on this earth perfectly, fulfilling all righteousness. It is to he whom we look. Not the Duggars, not Josh Duggar. Again, like I said, I didn't know who he existed until a few months ago. So, meh. But again, look to Christ and stop trying to find, uh, stop trying to find our, you know, 
righteousness and other men. I mean, the Tim Tebow's, the, the Duggars, the whatever, the, the um, Duck Dynasty people. I mean, come on. Jesus Christ is Lord. You know, not someone on a TV show who may or may not be a believer. Um, reality TV is anything but real. We've seen that time and time again. So why would we expect anything different from quote unquote Christian reality television? You want to live the, you want to, if it's showing you how awesome life is to be a Christian, that's not what the life of a Christian is about. It's about, uh, denying yourself, taking up your cross daily and following Jesus Christ. And there's no glamour in that. Nobody wants to watch that on television. Okay? Nobody wants to watch that on television. Nobody wants to see me repenting to my wife on television. Or repenting to my children if I'm, if I discipline them in anger. Nobody wants to see that on television. Okay? Nobody wants to see a repentant life. They killed Jesus because of his life and we're supposed to be like him. No one wants to see people preaching the gospel. That's why there's no television show about people preaching the gospel on the streets. You want to see a Christian TV show? That's what it should be about. Going about preaching the gospel, living in light of the gospel, denying yourself daily and taking up your cross. But that's not on television because that's the Christian life and nobody wants to see it. The unbelieving world hates it. We need to remember that. I know some of these words that I've said in this podcast have been strong, but it's necessary that we realize that this is what we're called to. Now, Josh Duggar, I pray for him to repent to truly repent, not to not to make a statement of repentance, but to actually inside of his own heart, repent before the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, get on his hands and knees and cry out to the Lord to, to redeem him from this sin. A re repent, confess these sins. That's what my prayer would be for Do Josh Duggar. And then live a life of repentance, uh, bear fruit in keeping with repentance. OK, until he does that, we have no uh, right to claim him or he has no right to claim that he's a part of the family of God because his walk does not uh, pay homage to Jesus Christ. It does not reflect someone who walks with the Lord. So I want to sign off here. I think I've already gone too long, but I thank you all for listening. And uh, thanks for the idea, Peter. I send a shout out to you when you send all the shout, shout out to me on the Worm Chronicle. Love you, brother. And I'll see you all on the next one. Soli Deo Gloria.